Going into a new expansion is always exciting. Paired with new content like dungeon raids and world building, it's, it's often where we also get to see class reworks and overhauls. Beta testing has been out for about two weeks now, and I've been able to test all the tanks in some capacity. But in this video, I want to primarily focus on the Vengeance Demon Hunter and talk about how the class feels coming out of two very dominant Mythic Plus seasons. Let's take a walk. Before we dive in, just a quick disclaimer. This is obviously beta testing. There are currently a plethora of bugs with many abilities across the board, especially with any new class, talents, or hero talents. There is plenty of time for Blizzard to make adjustments. This video is just generally my opinion on the class so far and the direction it seems that Blizzard is moving the class in. The Vengeance Demon Hunter was reworked back in 10.2 and has been a dominating tank ever since. The main shift in design philosophy shifted towards a sigil-based playstyle. This saw improvements to a lot of abilities like Sigil of Flame damage, reduction in Sigil cooldowns, cooldown reduction on Sigils, and easier access to Sigil of Chains, and of course a new talent like Illuminated Sigil. Accompanied with a powerful tier set that focused on further reducing the cooldown of Sigil of Flame, this resulted in a powerhouse tank with untouchable damage in the tanking role alongside insane control. So, the question on every tank main's mind has to be, will anything change? Let's talk about what Demon Hunters are actually going to be getting going to the new expansion and attempt to dissect if this class is going to maintain the crown of Mythic Plus or be dethroned. Unlike most tanks, the Demon Hunter is seeing the least amount of changes going into the War Within. This could be a good or bad thing, depending on how you look at it. The main thing that we're going to be gaining will be, of course, hero talents. But they will be losing out on their old tier set, obviously, and honestly, secondary stats. Haste and Critical Strike are essential to provide the Demon Hunter a cohesive gameplay experience. Obviously, early on in an expansion cycle, these stats are going to be at an all-time low. This may result in a lower performance early on in the season, but if you are a Vengeance Enjoyer, there are a lot of great things coming to the class. Speaking of great things, let's start with the tier set. Let's start with the two set. And this reads, Soul Cleave deals 15% increased damage and has a 35% chance to shatter one lesser soul fragment from the target it hits. This is clearly a very passive set bonus that affects just Soul Cleave damage. The chance to shatter, like the tier set states, is roughly around the 33% chance mark. So you can arguably break it down every one in three Soul Cleaves, but I've had some crazy back to back to back to back generation, and I've had a dry streak where I hit 10 Soul Cleaves in a row and I don't generate a single fragment, so this isn't really that static. Now, from the way it does read, though, I thought maybe it's per target hit. So through a single target test, a two target test, and a four target test, it seems to always fall in that 33, 35% chance range with a slight chance to high roll or low roll, depending. Because of this tier set, it's going to slightly adjust when you're going to want to soul cleave versus casting spirit bomb from two frags to three frags. This is obviously target count based since soul cleave is capped at five, but I felt like it was worth mentioning here. Now moving on to the 4 set, it reads consuming a soul fragment increases the damage and healing of your next spell devastation by 2% up to 30%. This is pretty straightforward. Consuming souls grants a stack up to 15. You should easily be hitting the 15 soul fragments between fell devastation casts. While, you know, arguably bland, this could potentially open up additional talent choices that bolster fell devastation, but honestly it's going to be pretty difficult to obtain. Talents like Ruinous Bulwark or Stoke the Flames can add additional power to the short cooldown. But honestly, I just couldn't think of a way to actually sacrifice any talents to pick them up. I haven't really touched these talents in particular, but after testing, sadly, Ruinous Bulwark only ends up granting like a measly 8% Absorb Shield. All in all, the tier set doesn't really interact with much of the spec's talents and is just generally bland. Definitely not the most exciting tier set. With tier sets out of the way and no real rework to the talents, let's talk about the hero talents that we're going to be gaining in the War Within. For the Vengeance Demon Hunter, there are two. You have Aldraki Reaver and Felsgard. Sadly, Aldraki Reaver does not function at the time of recording this video, like, at all. The idea is based around consuming fragments to empower your throw glaive, which will then amplify your fracture and soul cleave, providing powerful bonuses. But because you can't actually empower your glaive on beta, you just gain stacks and that's it. While we can't test it, I personally feel like this is going to be more focused on raid anyways. Once Blizzard fixes this for the Vengeance Demon Hunter, I'll be sure to commit a video to it. Anyways, let's take a look at Felsgard briefly. 
So in essence, this amplifies the Demon Hunter's metamorphosis. Every time you enter Demon Form, whether it's from Fell Devastation or from Metamorphosis, your next few abilities will actually explode or erupt for additional Fell damage. For me, this is what I think Demon Hunter has always been missing. Most tanks have some crazy good cooldowns to press. Avatar, Avenging Wrath, Incarnation, etc. But Metamorphosis has always felt just like tanky, but never explosive. With this hero talent, you're going to get the best of both worlds. There are additional features of the talent tree, like meta resetting the cooldown of your Sigil of Flame and Feldev. Also, there's a stagger-esque type of damage mitigation, and there's additional damage reduction through armor and cast speed reduction from Chaos Nova. This isn't really a hero talent tree that changes the way you play, but instead amplifies the existing kits. I've been personally having a lot of fun testing this so far on the beta. Now, this wasn't meant to be in this video, but as I was finishing up editing, um, Demon Hunter was actually nerfed. Illuminated Sigils now only grants an additional charge of Sigil of Flame. It used to be all Sigil, and it also now reduces Sigil of Flame cooldown by 5 seconds. So, a little bit of buff, I guess, to the damage, but no longer are you going to have access to double chains, double silence, double misery. So, unfortunately, um, Demon Hunter is looking a little worse than anticipated. So, uh, continue. All right, so quickly, let's talk about some final notes. Overall, Vengeance feels great to play. There are some shortcomings with the class in the state of beta. Personally, I can definitely feel the loss of secondary stats. Immolation Aura uptime is definitely lower, Generation is lower, and the class ability cadence just feels slow. Vengeance is a tank that really scales with haste and critical strike, so until we're geared, the class is going to feel a bit slow, and in Mythic Plus testing, we're scaled all the way down to 580 item level, which is like less than Raid Finder. Besides that pitfall, the only major loss coming out of Dragonflight is going to be that juicy tier set that we had in Season 3 and 4, which is going to reduce the amount of cooldown recovery that we're gaining from our sigils. This was obviously expected, but when you pair this with the lower secondary stats, it's noticeable. Outside of the bugs with Aldraki Reaver, I have to say that the Felscard... Uh, playstyle just feels phenomenal. The class is still simple. It offers various ways of control. It increases, obviously, group damage through through Chaos Brand, and has a rewarding play structure with Meta and Feldev acting as like these extremely bursty damage windows while still maintaining the immortality of the buff. I'm eager to see Blizzard update and fix Aldraki, but until that time comes, that's all for now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Of course, a massive shout out to all my Patreon supporters because without you guys, there would be a lot less videos like this. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.